You know, I came to get a babe cup. You know, probably came to the right place. <laughs> Do you still doing those? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. My wife doesn't, you know, call me a babe too often anymore, so I need you to help me out there. <laughs> yeah, I do it. <laughs> yeah, it does. If you notice her latest order that came out three weeks ago and that she just extended yesterday for another uh, two weeks up until December 20th, did you notice that there was nothing in those executive orders about barbershops or salons? <laughs> yeah. Do you think that you had anything to do with that, Kyle? I, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to assume anything, but uh, I know this, that I became a worm in her head. Yeah. I know that. Uh, I know that she knows that I will never back down. If it's governing, okay, that's something. You govern, and when you govern, you take, you make sure you that all of the, the the privileges that are given to us in our constitution are being distributed among the citizens. Mm -hmm. But if you rule, then you jump over that and decide that you're going to go beyond and above and without the constitution. You become a ruler. Mm -hmm. I'll be governed, yeah. but I'll never be ruled. Just kind of take us back real quick. When you decided to make the decision, when nobody else really was, to stand up and open up, what kind of made you think that you could do that, number one, and that you were doing the right thing? I have a kind of a new little mantra that I have here. It says, I would rather appear a little reckless, let people think I'm a little crazy, push the edge a little hard, and err on the side of being a rascal and ever wander too close to the walk of cowards. That's good. I could not do a cowardly act. Over the next couple of weeks, what happened with you know your business and people showing their support? What kind of things did you see? Well, the next day after you know after this initial when I initially opened, everything went well that day. You know, I thought, oh, this you know this isn't too bad. Uh, but I had made that statement. You know, somebody asked me if I, you know, what I was going to do, what I would, what would make me close, and I said, well, it'll be either I'll go out in handcuffs or if Jesus comes. <laughs> well, the next day, I was cutting a head of hair, and I glanced up over at my door, and there stands one of the sheriff deputies. I thought, okay, here it goes. I'm going to jail. I'm going out in handcuffs today. He says, Carl, look at me. I turned and I. I did one of these, I looked at him. He says, I love you. And turned around, walked out the door and got in his car and drove off. I knew then that I had a level of support that I didn't realize that I had. During all of that, did you ever have a COVID case that was traced back to Carl Mankey's barbershop? No, they, from my understanding was that she had, the, our governor Whitmer had, uh, had uh, employed a contact tracing uh, company. Yeah. And the, the rumor was that uh, what I, you know, I'm not a computer guy, but somebody else did a uh, kind of a reverse tracing, I guess, uh -huh. and found that they had contact traced something like 3,000 people through this, this the shop. During that period of time, found nothing. Nothing. Nothing, not zero, not one. I talk to a lot of business owners right now. Several of them said three weeks ago, I'm gonna give her this three weeks, but if it goes past this three weeks, I'm opening back up. And now I'm talking to a lot of those same business owners that just are not sure if they should. I'm hearing, number one, it's not the compassionate thing to do to worry about my business over saving lives or they'll say, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose my license because the a lot of them are saying they're far more afraid of the health department than they ever were the governor. So they're afraid they're gonna get their licenses pulled. Some of them are afraid they're gonna to get to go to jail. Some of them are afraid that they're just going to be publicly scrutinized and it will be far more detrimental on their business than just closing. And so what would you say to encourage these people that are probably having a similar thoughts to what you had before you decided um, and just are not willing to open up and go against the grain? Each person support. is going to have to weigh what they're willing to spend for freedom. You know, I was willing, I was willing to put it all on the line. I had no idea what was going to happen. I just knew that I was, I was not going to give up. You know, I came in here uh, full of fear, but 
still, nevertheless, I'm going to fight through this. God help me get through this. You know, God grant me the serenity to accept those things I can't change, but courage to change those things that I can't. That became my mantra, my prayer. And it still is. I still have fear. You know, my license is still hanging there. Right. You know, what am I going to have to do? You know, I mean, how much am I going to lose? All right, I may lose everything. I may. I may lose it all. But I'm not going to, I, I can't lose me in this. I cannot be a coward in this. And say, well, all right, I sold out. And okay, well, I guess I was just being a little hasty. Oh, I guess the governor was right. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I know I'm standing on, on what is the Constitution, it, on, our, on our freedoms. I know I'm standing on that. What, what's the solution to all this? The solution is, is that stand up. I'm not going to quit. Yeah. You know, as long as I have life left in me, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. This is, uh, it's too important to us as a nation and as a people yeah. to not stand up. Well, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. And I got to say, the babe cut looks great. Well, I'll let you yeah. know tonight if the wife approves. Yeah, all right. <laughs> appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Keep thank up you. the fight, and yeah. uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you very kindly. George. <laughs>